So logging is not a really a uh, flashy topic, but it's very important and it's better than bad and good. So we're going to go through uh, the five whys, starting with who should log. And the answer is you. And doesn't matter which you it is. Doesn't matter which department you're in. Yes, you should be logging. All of you at any point. Because it's really important. So you should always be thinking about logging when you're coding. When should you be logging? Anytime something might go wrong. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. My code is great. Nothing, nothing. What could ever possibly go wrong? But something can always go wrong. So here's some ideas of when it might happen. These are things that you should always be looking for as areas to log. Anything that can cause persistent change, persistent uh, permanent change. So database writes, database, you know, writing to files, anything with external integrations. These are great cases where you should be looking to log what's going on, when it's happening. Anything that can be difficult to troubleshoot. So automated tasks, content imports, things that happen that take a long time, might not be easy to troubleshoot, but definitely are things that you should be looking to write logs, add logs to so you can figure out what's going on. Anything that's complex logic, you'll know when you're writing the code, these are things that should be changed. These are things that should be looked into, so you want to have a closer eye on what's going on. And perhaps most importantly, anytime, anything that's going to cause problems with others if it, makes, if it breaks. It's a pretty wide-ranging topic, but I think we can all agree that if you're sending emails to your code, you really want to make sure that you're sending emails to the right people, and you want to know what happened. Like, did, did I actually accidentally send an email to all of the customers from my dev environment? You probably should have a good way to know that. Uh, that goes for social media, and again, it's external integrations, anywhere that you're going to be bothering somebody else. Because um, when it comes down to it, when something happens, logs are the clues that are going to help you find out what happened. They will help you crack the case. Why did this happen? How did this happen? What happened? So where should you be logging? The most relevant location and log level as to what you are dealing with. But I think most of us are probably aware of the general log levels. Most logging uh, frameworks support these basic log levels of debug, info, warn, error, and fatal. I know that Log4Net, which is what Sitecore and EpiServer use, definitely use these log levels. So you need to be figuring out where at these levels should you be logging. Just a brief uh, idea of which level, what these logs all mean, what these levels all mean. Debug is for verbose information. So you should, be, don't be afraid to add debug statements all over your code. In production, your log level is probably going to be set higher than debug most of the time, and so you won't see these logs. They, act, they can actually help you when you're looking at the code. See, like, this is the things that, you know, that I wanted to be logging. It's almost like commenting your code. So you, you can be very liberal with putting uh, debug logging in your code. Info is for not as verbose messaging, but things that you probably want to know uh, that are going on. Um, this can be things like with an import, when you're starting the content import, when you're sending, sending an email, uh, just that general information that you're going to want to know. Warning is for when something's amiss, but not broken quite yet. So, you know, maybe you're looking for a field, you're looking for something that's uh, supposed to be there and it's not there. Your code can handle that situation and the, the can recover from it, but it's not ideal. So you put in some warning statements. These are definitely going to show up in almost every log because you're almost always set to at least warn or higher. And errors, perhaps, obviously, are for when you have errors, when you have exceptions. You should always be logging the stack trace. You should be always putting that into the code and uh, whenever there's problems here. And fatal, I we rarely use fatal, but that's for when things are just absolutely upside down and you cannot recover from. So, you know, that's for super bad situations. Now, the other part of where is where should you be actually logging these files, the logs? Uh, a lot of times there's the choices between a specific log file and a general log file or a database or, again, specific or general. You know, do you want Sitecore, for example, in this first line here? You know, there's the basic Sitecore log, the log and the date, or you can set up your specific log files. This comes down to really just a judgment call based on the code, what you're doing and where uh, things should be. 
uh, you have, as you're working with your code, you'll have a better idea of what uh, should go where. A lot of times, things like an import should have their own log file, probably, because you're going to want to. They're going to be a lot of information. Maybe on that log file, you want that log level to be set to info or debug. Something more general about the whole site, just the home page, you know, the navigation. Maybe that lives in the regular log file. You'll know that as you're working with the code. It's really just a judgment call for you. So what should you be logging? Whatever you need to pinpoint the source of the problem. Because ultimately, logging is going to help you find problems and figure out how to fix them. You want to make sure that there is no way that your log message will not point you to exactly where the problem is. So in this perhaps ridiculous example, the invitation here, you can see all the line items here telling you exactly what file, what method, what line of code, what time. Everywhere you have to know, say, hey, that's where the problem is. But don't be stupid when you're logging. You know, don't put passwords in there. Don't put home addresses, personal health information, or personal identifiable information. Don't do that. You just got to be smart about this thing. They don't do anything. Don't put anything in there that, you know, you don't want shared with anyone at the company. Usernames, probably okay. Because you might need to figure out, hey, what's the user that was having this issue? User IDs. They can work, too. And why should you log? We've talked about this a lot already, but to help the next person with what's going on, with what your code is. And the next person might be you, because it might be you six months down the line. You never know. You're going you're gonna to write some code. You're going to go away from it for a while. And then you're going to come back and say, this isn't working. And what, you know, what monkey wrote this code? And then you, oh, it was me. Uh, but you have the logs there. They'll help you a lot more figure out what's going on, what the problem is. Logs might be the only way that you can actually figure out what happened and when your app crashed spectacularly, when everything went up in flames, when the inf when the uh, feature on your, your homepage just stopped working, you know, the uh, login page just not working. You might not know, or you may it may be a transient error. Maybe it only happens occasionally, and you can't actively reproduce it. If you don't have good logs, you're never going to know what actually happened. Where things, uh, where where the problem arise. It's a example is like a flight recorder here. You know, like that's why we have flight recorders in airplanes, so you can figure out exactly what happened and know what. Hopefully, you know our code isn't crashing airplanes. Um, so perhaps that's a dramatic example, but should hopefully be having uh, being able to figure out what's actually going wrong. And the famous quote from a long time ago in programming, always code as if the person who ends up maintaining your code is a violent psychopath who knows where you live. Generally quoted to John F. Woods from 1991. Um, and in this case, you know, I'm in DigOps, so I'm, a lot, I'm gonna be inheriting a lot of your code and I can look at source control and see who you are. So if you don't log and I'm having problems with your code, I probably won't come and kill you, but I probably will come and yell at you. So a couple bonus things to note beyond the, the five W's is how long to keep old log files around. Um, this is another judgment call. Depends very much on what you think you're going to be doing with this code, with, uh, how long you might think to go back. Personally, for Sitecore, I like to keep six months or so of logs. They don't really fill up too much information. I mean, they don't, excuse me, they don't fill up your disk space too much. So. That usually gives me a good idea of what's going on. It covers a few deployments back, so I can see what was things, what were things like before this. Uh, if you've got more disk space, it doesn't hurt to save more. Um, but you know, your import logs might end up being very verbose. You might, they might be, you know, lots of lines, and so you maybe don't want to save those around as long. You know, this is again the judgment call based on what you're going to be doing with those logs. Uh, Something that comes up often logs in a database or logs in files. Now, Sitecore and Epi both by default saw, uh, save logs into files. And that's usually fine. You know, Sitecore has a great log analyzer tool to help you figure out things. Um, we all know how to use grep and how to look for code, look for files, uh, look for text, specific text in files. Um, 
if you do end up needing to generate, save more data or more logs, or you want to generate some sort of interesting reports from it, you probably want to think about using a database. Um, I just ran into that with one of my accounts where we have an error going back. Uh, over two years has been going on, and we were able to find all the logs from the database. That probably would, we probably would not have kept around if they were in log files. And uh, what tools should you use to log? Um, you typically want to use the tool that, that works with the platform that you're using. So being a Sitecore developer myself, I'm using Sitecore Diagnostics Log, which is an implementation of log for net um, Epi also includes log for net but whatever tool you're using, whatever platform you're using, probably has some sort of logging code or logging framework built for it, and you probably want to use that unless you have a really good reason not to. log for net for example, will, can log to databases, can log to third-party APIs. You can give it, it has a wide range of places you can log, so it can support anything that we've talked about here. And how do you know if you're logging too much? You're not. There's just, uh, there's just never, I don't want to say there's never too much, you can never log too much, but I have yet to see code in my career that where I'm like, wow, this is just too much logging. It's just, that just never happens. So you're probably not logging enough. And that, that's it. Um, I'm more of a Star Trek fan than Star Wars, so I replaced the general the Boba Fett here with Star Enterprise. But um, any questions anybody have about logging? Anything they want to talk about? Yeah, Eli? Logging is like right. So for people on the, on the uh, remote, um, Eli brought up the point that you might not know exactly how much logging uh, is actually going to happen. He had a case where uh, code was filling up the disk space really quickly with log files, like gigabytes of log files. That's very important. Hopefully, we've got uh, you know someone you know DevOps monitoring tools to make sure that we can get alerted before the disk fills up. Um, but this is also can be really helpful to know if you're written code that you know the log you know if the process is running way more often than you think and the logs filling up. It's like now you know that. Right, so again, Eli was mentioning that they didn't do, this was on debug log only in the dev server. So um, using those log levels can help manage that sort of problem, like what's happening on different environments. You know, uh, production is probably gonna be set to something like Warn by default, I believe that's uh, what a lot of us, use, what a lot of places use. So you're not gonna get huge amounts of data in the logs. Um, one thing that's interesting about the log levels is um, Sitecore doesn't allow you to adjust them on the fly and runtime, but Log4Net itself, and including the old version that Cycro uses, does support that. Um, so I've written code in the past that allowed to give an admin page to dynamically change the log level. Like if something's happening in production and you don't want to update the config file to cause, which will cause an app pool recycle, which maybe you can't do on production. Um, so you, instead of that, you were able to use something like that to update the log file, log level dynamically. Um, but yeah, be, pay attention to the log levels and the environments that you're using them in. If you're using any sort of config transform, you should probably make sure that the log level is part of the trans transformation. Any other questions, thoughts, or stories? Hey, Ed. we got a, uh, some thoughts in Chicago. Uh, kind of curious if we can talk about kind of some best practices around ways in which we should structure our logging. I think earlier on when you were talking about the debug stuff and saying we should put log statements everywhere, I'm, I worry that we go too far and that we potentially don't put those in the right spot and so we make code that's pretty unreadable uh, as we litter log statements around uh, them. So I wanted to offer two suggestions to, for that interception. With decorator classes, so that's a really great way. If you're, if you do have dependency injection set up in such a way, interceptions of a feature of most DI frameworks to light or wrap something around a particular method calls, so you could potentially target all your services, all your service methods uh, with a logging wrapper, um, and then separate log classes to call methods. So I found that's been a, a nice way to do that. So if you've got Poco class, you make, you know, Poco log, uh, and you can just call the methods and potentially pass in the um, 
passing any particular supporting variables that you might need ends up making the, the code look a lot cleaner because you're not writing the debug messages directly out to the, the executing code. It's kind of tucked away and hidden in a separate class. That's it. Yeah, no, that's, those are really good suggestions. Um, I, I really especially like the idea of writing uh, log classes for specific uh, logging situations. So you can, instead of having the log, uh, like you said, instead of having the log, the debug text, the actual string in your code there in the in the regular app code, you say, you know, uh, you know, my object logger dot, you know, log, uh, you know, whatever, a log transaction and give it the data. And then that method has all the strings. I like that. It keeps everything clean. Um, cool. Anything else? No? Okay, cool. So I expect that you all be... Uh, be uh, blogging a lot more and uh, be logging experts real soon. <laughs>